Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome back to our subject, Purposive Communication Using English in Multilingual Contexts. I hope that you are in a comfortable seat wherever you are watching this pre-recorded video. And now let's start with our uh, second lesson for Unit 1, Language and Communication. Okay, let's start with our next lesson for Unit 1, Language and Communication. So we are done with our lesson one, the nature of language, which you are, uh, uh, which you learned about what is language and communication. What are the aspects of language to be called language, the speech community, language acquisition, and many more. And now let's proceed with our lesson two, the types of communication. But before that, let's uh, discuss first our learning outcomes in lesson two, types of communication. So our first learning outcome is to demonstrate knowledge about the role of language in human communication. Second is to identify types of communication in relation to communication mode, context, and purpose and style. Third is to uh, differentiate verbal and nonverbal and visual communication and their subforms in relation to communication modes. Fourth is to evaluate the differences among intrapersonal and interpersonal, extended, organizational, and intercultural communication in relation to communication context. Fifth is to explain the differences between formal and informal communication in relation to purpose and style. And our last learning outcomes in lesson two types of communication is to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the different of the different communication types in various communication settings. And Let's start. So what is communication? In one to two sentences, <laughs> again, in one to two sentences, I want you to provide your own perspective on what is communication, the importance of communication, and why do we use communication? And post your answer in the comment section within two days after I posted this pre-recorded video and posting beyond that day your answer your answer will be considered as void and i hope that's clear and follow the format um state your full name and to be followed by your answer i hope that's clear okay okay now let's define communication according to the book of madronio and martin so what is communication? Communication is the act of conveying meanings from one entity or group to another through the use of mutually understood signs, symbols, and semiotic rules. Communication is simply the act of transferring information from one place, person, or group to another. And lastly, Communication is the process of sending and receiving messages through verbal and nonverbal means, including speech or oral communication. So according to Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N, and Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N, according to them, communication now is defined as the process of understanding and sharing meanings. Again, according to Pearson and Nelson, um, communication now defined as the process of understanding and sharing meaning. So talking about communication, it is the way on how people communicate with each other, with each other, and that is what we call interpersonal communication. And also, 
communication refers talking to oneself or what they call intrapersonal communication. In every communication, it involves at least one sender, one message, and a recipient. Is it impossible nga wala joy sender? Asa ni gikan nga message? Kinsay source ani nga message? So dapat jod ang communication na adyo siya at least one sender. Okay? Okay, makonfuse ka and makonscious ka asa ni gikan nga message. Like for example, kana mga surprise, surprise po. Diba? Surprise message. Na di dahi source. Kung alam ni mo na ibawaan. At least na ay isa ka source. Okay? And that is communication. And also, communication, this may sound simple, but communication is actually a very complex subject. In short, communication is simply the act of um, transferring information from one place, person, or group to another. And that is communication. Another, communication, depending on what is being considered, communication is a term takes on a different context, resulting in people having different views on communication types. Later, you will be exposed to different communication types. And lastly, some communication is um, generally defined as the exchange of thoughts, ideas, concepts, and views between or among two or more people in a various context come into play. So effective communication, again, effective communication is about more than just exchanging information. It's about um, understanding the emotion and intentions behind that information, as well as being able to clearly convey a message. But you need also to listen in a way that you will be able to gain the full meaning of what is being said and what makes the other person feel heard and understood. And for many of us, communicating more clearly and effectively, it requires learning some important skills. Whether you are trying to improve your communication with your spouse, your kids, your friends, boss, or coworkers, Learning these skills can deepen your connections to others, can build greater trust and respect, and improve teamwork. Later, you will also be exposed to a different skills in how to deepen your um, communication skills. Okay, let's proceed. So, what is context? Context is the circumstance or environment in which communication takes place, or the words that are used with a certain word or phrase to explain its meaning. Ang timanalan ninyo kung unsa ang context, ang environment, or an, or ang setting, asa na siya. Therefore, context refers to the setting in which communication takes place. The context also, um, it helps to establish meaning and can influence what was said and how it was said. And that is context. Remember, context is a setting or an environment in which communication takes place. Next, context, such cir circumstance may include a physical or actual setting. The value positions of a speaker or listener and relevance of appropriateness of a message conveyed. And also, 
it focuses on certain communication processes and even groupings of people that constitute a communication situation. Therefore, contact, context is made up of parts of communication that influence the meaning of a message. Context also has an influence on communication process. And context can overlap, can create an even more dynamic process. You, you, uh, you have been communicating in many contexts across your lifetime. And you will be able to apply what you've learned from your experiences in multiple contexts in different fields and that is context next we have the um context <laughs> different contexts can impact one's communication each communication type is governed by a particular circumstance thus it is essential to pay attention to the interplay of factors surrounding the context of communication, which may be physical, culture, social, and psychological in nature. And lastly, communication may be then be classified according to um, communication mode, communication according to context, communication according to purpose and style. And in this bullet, it stated that, that it is essential now to pay attention to the interplay of factors surrounding the context of communication, which may be physical, cultural, social, and psychological in nature. So in short, context is critical because it tells you, the receiver, what importance to place on something, what assumptions to draw about what is being communicated. And most importantly, context, it puts meaning into message. And the hardest thing about communication or the hardest thing about communicating effectively is knowing how to set the context. Mana siya ang pinaka in communicating effectively on how to set the context. Okay, let's discuss this communication according to mode, according to context, and according to purpose and style. So let's start with the type of communication according to mode. So these types of communication and message may be conveyed via these types. The verbal, nonverbal, and visual communication. Very basic nga discussion. <laughs> Pang elementary. But we need to explain this. Kaya na siya sa ang syllabus. And para ma-refresh po mo. Kaya basig na kalimot na mo sa verbal and nonverbal. So let's start with verbal communication. So verbal communication comes refer to the forms of communication in which message is transmitted verbally. Malamang. Okay, verbal man siya. Communication is done by word with the use of mouth and a piece of writing. It's either spoken or written communication. And that is verbal communication. When we talk to others, we assume that others understand what we are saying because we know what we are saying. Malama, kabalo jita kung sa atong historia sa tuang receiver. But this is not the case. Usually, people bring their own attitude, their own perception, emotions, and thoughts about the topic, and hence create barrier in delivering the right meaning. So, mo na siya when you are communicating with each other, kung the communicate siya sa imuha, the use siya sa iyahang opinion, respect his or her opinion. Iyahan ang opinion, dili ka magbuot. Okay? Wala siya. Talk with respect. Listen with respect. Ana na siya. Ang communication. 
And also, in order to deliver the right message, you must put yourself on the other side of the table and think from your receiver's point of view. Would he understand the message? How it would sound on the other side of that table? So, dapat mo yung na naon kung nasabdan yun ba sa imuhang receiver ang imuhang storya. Tama ba ang iyahang pag-convey or tama ba ang imuhang pag-convey sa iyaha or tama ba ang iyahang pag-receive sa imuhang mga message, sa imuhang gi-encode nga message or tama po ba ang iyahang gi-decode nga message para gikan sa imuhang gi-encode. Ha, di ba? Naglibog na mo si encode and decode later on. Ato na siyang ma-discuss. Okay? Next. A verbal communication is further divided into two. Okay, let's define its communication. We have the oral communication and written communication. Let's start with oral communication. So in oral communication, spoken words are used. And the word oral with the use of your ilong, si mata, baba, baba gamiton, oral communication. Dapat ang oral ha, dapat sumpayan ng communication. Okay, kung oral lang, it's another story. Okay? I hope that you're aware with that. Again, in oral communication, spoken words are used. It includes a face-to-face -face conversation, speech, telephonic conversation, video like this, pre-recorded video, and radio. In oral communication, Communication is influenced by pitch, the volume, the speed and clarity of message. And that is an oral communication. Next, the written communication. In written communication, written signs or symbols are used to communicate. Written communication. A written message may be printed or Hand written. In written communication, message can be transmitted via email, letter, report, memo, and many more. And lastly, written communication is most common form of communication being used in business. Mga business transaction, business proposal, and many more. Mostly, jod ang written communication ginagamit yun siya in in a field of business, okay? Mga communication letters, ana na siya. So we see the differences between the oral communication and the written communication. And now let's proceed with the nonverbal communication. Kung ang verbal, nagstorya, ang nonverbal, nagunsa, nagyawyaw, dili, dili ta, dili nagyawyaw. Nonverbal communication includes the gestures, the facial expressions, and body position, or also known as body language. What is your body language? Gestures ba? Facial expression or body position? And also, nonverbal language or nonverbal communication is the transmission of messages or signals through a nonverbal platform such as eye contact. Facial expressions, gestures, and the distance between two individual or what we call proximity. Okay? So, on sa pamay mga nonverbal communication, on sa pamay mga types of nonverbal communication. Okay, maoni siya ang ubang types of nonverbal communication the eye contact, the facial expression, gestures, posture, and body orientation the body language, space, distance, or proximity, the paralinguistic or the component of nonverbal uh, non communication. The humor also can be a type of nonverbal communication, the touch, the silence, the personal appearance, the symbol, and of course, the visual communication is considered as a nonverbal communication. I hope that's clear. Nonverbal, mana siya. Ang verbal, spoken. Okay. Now let's proceed with uh, visual communication. So what is visual communication? 
visual communication when communication occurs by when uh, by means of um, any usual uh, any visual aids is only uh, no sana mako it is known as visual communication again when communication occurs by means of gagamit sa mga visual aids then that is considered as a visual communication and lastly virtual uh, virtual <laughs> visual communication on the other hand is the type of communication that uses visuals to convey information and or messages ano siya ang visual communication gagamit siya og mga visual to convey information and or messages like for example mga statue mga church and diagrams and mga maps mana siya ang visual communication and visual communication, some examples are signs, symbols, imagery, maps, graphs, charts, diagrams, pictograms, photos, drawings, or illustrations, and even various forms of electronic communication is considered as a visual communication. So what is electronic communication, symbols, or images? So they are the emojis na itong ginagamit sa pag-text or sa toang mga... Uh, the way on how we communicate on social media. Gamit ang mga images or emoticons or even um, uh, animation or kind of mga GIF, among others, to convey the writer's emotion or clarity, the intention of the message sender. And be careful lang punta hanga ka nang mag-send-send sa tuwag mga heart-heart, mga happy-happy, pero we don't know kung is it real or not. So, dili mag <laughs> Ano lang, no expectation at all. Ano lang dito, no? Again, ha, electronic communication, symbols or images is considered as a visual communication. And also take note that verbal and nonverbal codes should complement each other. Hindi na sila pwede magbulag si verbal and nonverbal communication. Pwede mo magbulag si Uyab, pero si verbal and nonverbal, di siya pwede magbuwag. <laughs> With visual communication, Interpers, uh, interpretation of signs and symbols is crucial since people have different ways of interpreting them. Matawagin ko sa inyo ha, kung lahat siya opinion, respect his or her opinion, kiiyahan ng opinion. And it is important to always contextualize the symbols or signs received in order to arrive at the correct interpretation. So, ano siya? Kung lahi kang context or lahi kang environment or setting nag to, we should be careful sa ito ang mga sign, mga body language, kay lahi ang ato ang pasabot o good para sa ito ah, pero bad na sa ilaha and we should be aware of that. Okay? And that's the end of our discussion on types of communication according to masagay uh, ito siya, according to Yes, that's correct. Types of communication according to mode. And now let's proceed with the types of communication according to what's the next? Context. Okay, context na punta. So these types of communication according to context, communication may, be, may also be classified according to context. Intrapersonal, interpersonal, extended, organizational communication and the intercultural communication. So let's start with the intrapersonal communication. So what is intrapersonal communication? The Latin prefix intra means within or inside. Intrapersonal communication then means talking to oneself. Ah, mo na siya ha, talking to oneself. Kaya ba, sinapay o ba na niya, wala kahibalo. I know nga, didiscuss na niya during your senior high school. Dili, dito ko magkamali. Nga, na-discuss dito ni Nino. <laughs> so, some label it as a self or an inner talk. Inner monologue or inner dialogue. Mo na siya ang intrapersonal communication. And according to psychologists, they call it with other names such as self-verbalization or self-statement. According to psychologists. And self-talk 
is one of the example of intrapersonal communication. And what is self-talk? Self-talk can be advantageous as it can enable you to practice what you also say in times when you lack the motivation and confidence to speak. Very helpful, unique, intrapersonal communication, especially in self-talk. Self-talk or talking to oneself, talking to yourself. I call my way on how to talk myself. I will not look my face. I will not look myself sa mirror. Kaya samot ko makulbaan, samot ko maratol. Pangit ang itagnaw, makit ang rin ako kung naong sasamli. Sa dili ko. Dili dyo ko, avoid ko ang mga mirror, mirror on the wall. Ako, the way ko mag-self-talk, mato ako ingon, walay mirror. Ako lang imagine nga, nagtindog ko, then sa ako ang front, na ako ang mga kaaway. Anong mga kaaway man ako ang way? Di ba kung na ito mga kaaway, pabida-bida ta? Di ba pakitan gilas ta? So muna akong way, mag-self-talk. Nagtindog ko niya, akong i-imagine niya ang mga audiences, akong mga kaaway. Bahalang nanutok mo sa kuah, bida-bida ko. This is me. Dira ako makagain o confident. And that is my way on how to gain my confidence. Or if in times nga, gata ka kong task, then lack of motivation, muna akong buhaton. Nga matindog ko, imagine ako nga, ako mga audience, ako ng mga kaaway. Bida-bida. And that is intrapersonal communication. That is my way. Lailahit na way. I hope nga, kana inyo hang way will be helpful sa inyo ha. In times kung yata gan mag-task, kung lack mag-motivation or lack mag-confidence. Okay? Next is the interpersonal communication. What is interpersonal communication? The Latin prefix enter means between, among, and together. An interactive exchange takes place as interpersonal communication takes place. And that is interpersonal communication. And this may occur in jads or what we call small groups or, or known as a group communication. Wana siya ang interpersonal communication. Di ba nakabutang dito ah? Between, between, among, and together. So it considered ang jads or ang small groups sa interpersonal communication. And also, interpersonal talks are meant for um, maintaining social relationships, transactional talks, that aims to accomplish or solve something at the end of the conversation. So interpersonal communication, ajud mo aims and goals at the end of your conversation. And like kang intrapersonal communication, maga the gain lang siya or the boost sa imo hang motivation and your confidence. Malang to kang intrapersonal. Well, kang interpersonal communication at the end of your conversation dapat na ajud mo lesson na na-learn na mo'y aims, na hit ninyo ang inyong aim or your objectives. And that is the interpersonal communication. Next, we have this extended communication. Take note, uh, wait lang. Extended communication involves the use of electronic media. Again ha, uh, mali siya ang term, uh, ang keyword, use of electronic media, ang extended communication. Extended communication is public in nature. Speakers are expected to be prepared when they speak, making their language more formal. And that is extended communication. And also, with the use of electronic media, messages are transmitted quickly in just one click. Then disseminate the so ang imuhang message. And lastly, with the use of extended communication, your own thinking, your own behavior and attitude may be influenced by other people. And you may be able to persuade them to take views you hear. And that is extended communication. And take note that extended communication involved the use of electronic media such as tele, audio, or video conferencing. And that is the extended communication, the use of electronic media. Next, we have the organizational communication. So what is organizational communication? It, com 
uh, organizations comprise individuals who work for company. Malamang, because we are talking about organization or organizational. Organizational communication indicates communication not only in business, but also in hospitals, churches, government agencies, military organization, and many and many and any organization. Nahan pa organization. Okay? Dili lang kay siya sa company lang. Basta kay organization na siya, then naagya po na sila mga specific communication ethics na ginafollow. So organizational communication, it is the exchange of information, ideas, and views within and outside the organization. In general, organizational communication is compounded of interpersonal communication process across an organization. And that is organizational communication. And take note that in any organization, a system of communication should be put in place. Transmission of message and message flow also play an important role in effective organizational communication. So later on, we discuss na to ang uh, later on or sa sunod nga discussion, ma discuss na to more ang uh, mga organizational ethics in terms of communication. Next, we have this intercultural communication. So what is intercultural communication? It is a communication between or among people having different linguistics, different religion, religious, ethnic, social, and a professional background. In even gender, difference affects communication. The gay language can affect communication. Individuals having different orientations communicate and interpret messages um, differently. This particular uh, this particularly happens with nonverbal communication. Muna siya ang intercultural communication. Diba? Gingon din hiya nga. Individuals can communicate and interpret messages differently. Mona, kung gingon gay na that you should be aware if you are a speaker to use an appropriate word, appropriate gestures and body language. Kay. Para sa imuha, it's good, pero to the other, or sa imuha, urgent, it's a bad or offensive sa ilaha. So, should be careful with that para wala yung communication breakdown or miscommunication. Next. Take note that uh, people have different linguistics. John, lalahit tag religious, uh, religion, lalahit tag ethnic, lalahit tag social life or social background or professional background. It is necessary Judha, to pay attention to intercultural communication to avoid miscommunication and or communication breakdown. Man akong giingon gaina nga careful ta sa to ang dapat appropriate ato ang mga words yang gipanggamit in that particular context or environment or setting. Next, we are done with the types of communication according to mood and context and let's proceed with our last types of communication according to purpose and style. So, naalang siya formal and informal communication. So, formal communication. What is formal communication? Malamang, mag-formal ka. <laughs> it employs formal language delivered. It's either oral or written. Like, for example, lectures, public talks or speeches, Research and project proposals, reports and business letters, or among others, are considered formal situations and writings. And lastly, lastly, <laughs> note that while lectures and speeches are, are delivered orally, the texts have been thought out carefully and written well before they are delivered because we are talking about formal communication so ga follow din siya sa 
uh, system of rule or katong grammar or syntax, the structure itself. And lastly, the main objective or the it's not the main objects. The main objectives of this type of communication is to inform, to entertain, and to persuade. So, ang kaning to inform mo ni siya ang the author or the speaker wants you to give information. Like, for example, you can give information from textbook, from nonfiction books, expository essays, biographies, essays, and many more. And that is to inform. And the and this one, ang kaning to entertain. The author or the speaker wants you to amuse. The amuse kaniya for you to enjoy the writing or the speech. Like for example, the fiction stories, the poems, the songs, the plays, jo jokes, jokes, narratives, and many more. And that is entertain. Again, it's to inform to give information. Ang entertain, the author wants you to amuse for you to enjoy the writing or the speech. And lastly is to persuade. So what is to persuade? Of course, the author or the speaker wants you to buy, to do, or to believe something. And that is to persuade. Like for example, mga advertisement. Uh, advertisement. That's, that is an example of uh, persuade, to persuade you. Mga persuasive letters. The opinions is considered as uh, persuasive. The campaign speeches. Oh, yeah, to believe something. Pero pag naana sa position, asa naman tong imong giingon. And many more. And that is to persuade. Again, ha? the main objectives of this type of communications, of formal communication, it's to inform, to entertain, and to persuade. And now let's proceed to the informal communication. Kabalik taran so formal communication. So informal communication certainly does not employ formal language. Malamang. Kabalik taran siya. It involves personal and ordinary conversations with family, friend, uh, uh, friends, or acquaintances about anything or talking anything under the sun. So the mode may be oral as in face-to-face, -face, ordinary or everyday talks and phone calls or mga video calls or written as in the case of email messages, personal notes, letters or text messages. And lastly, the purpose of this informal communication is simply to socialize and enhance relationship. Informal communication ka ng mga marites, dinhaas yung mga silingan, or basing ikaw, marites. <laughs> uh, mga na siyang informal communication, mga tabi-tabi, mga hearsays, hearsays. <laughs> and take note that formal and informal communication have different uses depending on the situation or context. And both types may be in oral or written communication. And that is the end of our Unit 1 Lesson 2 discussion. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for watching this pre-recorded video. Keep safe, everyone, and see you next time.